Hello and welcome to this video for today whether you're here for the first time or you're returning hope you will enjoy Hey there guys how's it going <laughs> now guys we're getting into our final um, one of these commander D&D precon decks and we're now looking at the planar portal uh, commander deck so I think this one's one of the most unique ones and this is a pretty cool one we're going to have a quick look at some of the stuff that's in the deck uh, even if I don't pay 100% attention to some of the cards and whatnot and then we're going to have a look at uh, what we're doing with it and uh, upgrade this deck and see what we're going to do with it so yep yeah, let's get rid of this Let's move over, move back here, if it ever wants to do it. Sometimes it'd be, it'd be like that, bro, it'd be like that. So, <laughs> you can see the deck uh, that we've got working with. And um, there are quite a few cards in this deck. Again, I'm not going to go over the prices or the stats, like, again... The prices for the new cards especially, they're in flux, they're going to change. So don't pay much mind to the price uh, that you that you see here uh, overall or anything like that. It doesn't reflect the actual you know cost or whatnot of the cards and whatnot and what you're getting really. There are some really great reprints that are in this deck, um, you know, some really good cards that are in this deck. Uh, a couple cards that I was kind of like, well, why isn't this... Why is Wayfarer's Bobble in one of the decks and it's not in all of the decks that don't have green? It's just a little bit weird. I just don't understand that. You know, like, it, it makes no sense to me. But whatever. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm glad that they reprinted it anyway. But it is weird that it's not in every one of these decks. But anyway, it's just, it is what it is again. But again, you can see what's in this deck and see what, you know, is going on with this deck uh, for the most part. There's some cool cards again. This is a very interesting commander, Prosper Tonebound. Uh, very interesting dude. We're going to go over to EDH Rec and have a bit more of a look at uh, what we're going to do with Prosper and what he's actually doing. So what I'm, what I'm looking at with Prosper, and again, I'm not changing any of these commanders around and whatnot because I just think when you get the precon you're mostly building around the face commander if you want to build one of the other decks you do that like again i'm interested in some of the actual other commanders so you know again if you guys are interested in some of the other commanders from this deck you know let me know because i or any of the other decks because i want to do more of this content for you guys like that's it like just tell me what you want and i'll get to it and i'll do it like seriously like <laughs> This is what we do here. We, we try to find stuff that you guys like. But anyway, what this guy is doing, for the most part, is trying to exile stuff. His own ability does it. Some other abilities in this deck does it. Like, he's trying to exile stuff so that you can cast stuff from the exile zone uh, in weird ways, I guess. But still, you know, like, that is a thing that Red does do to a fair degree for the most part um you know but again he's doing that whole exiling thing um so that you can get some nice treasures and you know like uh, we would like some nice treasures uh treasures are good you know treasures always uh, add you more mana i would like to find ways that you can actually like utilize uh the treasure without having to sack them um that's one of the big things that you you often try to do with with cards and say you have to sack them to you know get the value because you want to keep the treasures you want the treasures to stick on the battlefield and whatnot so that you can keep utilizing them like mana rocks essentially um throughout the game so you know we're going to get into that that's what we're trying to do though with this deck at least in theory so we're trying to exile stuff mostly um you know zorn's actually pretty good and it's whoa it's actually a fair bit um or oh, six bucks but still like that's a fair bit uh, but zorn making extra treasures you want to make treasures and if you're making treasures you want to make extra treasures seems good to me so that seems like a good card 
Uh, summon a uh, find some prisoners exiling top two cards. Not terrible, but I think you can do better. I think you I want you want more things that do it more repeatedly. Uh, Lelia, not too bad from a precon last year or was it earlier this year? Whatever, whatever it was, you know, not too bad. Is repeatable. Exiles two things. Um. Isn't it? No, no, I was thinking of one of the other commanders that says you get double uh, attack triggers or whatever. But it is still pretty good, you know, exiling the top card, letting you play it, you know, getting you extra mana with your commander is still pretty good. Um, Hurl Through Hell's okay, but I don't love it. I think it's a bit too expensive. I know it was in the deck, but I'm just saying. Die Fleet Daredevil, actually, that's really good. Uh, but it is a little bit hit or miss sometimes. Um, you can just find times in which it's like, well, there's not that many good instant sorceries in the yards that your opponents have, but a, a lot of time you will find that there is something there that you can snag very easily, um, and, and it is just good value. Like, it can get removal spells, it can get like cultivates and rampant growth and things like that. So that can be really good um, for, this, for this deck. I know it's in the deck. I know it's in the deck because it's got the symbol, but it's just a really great card. I'm just saying it's a really good effect. Um, Jessica's Will is obviously amazing, but it is a lot of money uh, for most people. Atali's not too bad. I am not a huge fan of Atali myself, but I know it's pretty darn good. So, yeah. Dream Devourer, actually, like, a lot of people have forgotten about this card. Just giving your stuff Fortel, and Fortel exiles the cards, and then you get to cast them later. It's really good, and it reduces your Fortel cost by two, which is amazingly good, too. Uh, so that's, that's a really good card that I would think goes in this deck. Light up the stage, not terribly bad either. Uh, Ignite the future is pretty good too. Uh, Commune with Lava, not too bad. Uh, Valky actually exiles stuff. I didn't actually read that that well uh, until like we I went through this and had a little bit of a look at this card and read it again. And I was like, oh yeah, he exiles stuff. Uh, does his other side exile? Yeah, he exiles on both sides. So, you know, like... That's really good and can do some really powerful stuff. He is a fair bit of money, but still he's really good. And Valkyrie Expedition is really good. That's that's a really great card because especially like it's 50 cents. So that's really good. Gonti's not too bad either. Um, again, I again this is me personally, but I don't care about stealing my opponent's stuff. Because again, their stuff is not going to synergize with what I'm doing. It's just stuff that they have. So I'd rather just get my own stuff, because it's going to synergize with what I'm doing. Unless you're a theft deck, I don't really see the point. Like, stolen strategy, yeah, same thing. Like, But you get your own cards, so that that makes up for it. Like, that's why, like, uh, Atali is pretty good, because you do get your own thing. Uh... So, yeah, I'd rather just cast my own thing and not care about their thing. Because it's like, well, what's your thing doing? I don't know. I don't care. Go away. <laughs> you know. This, uh, this enchantment's not too bad. You know, like, it defers people from attacking you a little bit. But, uh, again, I don't really care about casting other people's stuff. Like, again, like, if you are if you want to go down the path of going, oh, okay, I want to steal people's stuff. Yeah, sure, whatever. Same with Ragaman. Especially since he's over like a hundred bucks or whatever, that's ridiculously high. So it's just like, well, unless you really want to steal people's stuff, yeah, just no. Uh, Bergy, the front side isn't too bad. It gives you mana, which isn't too bad. But the back side actually uh, exalts cards, so that's actually really quite good. I would take it more for the back side in this case than the front. Um. Theater of Horrors isn't too bad because you can actually cast them with your commander's ability still, so that that does work uh, out pretty well. You don't have to worry about the whole 
spectacle dealing damage stuff so it can work out okay uh it's not the greatest you know it's okay though and it does go in this in a deck like this outpost siege isn't terribly bad but it's just not terribly good it, it it's you know like again it's just fine if you want to put it in but yeah uh not amazing um what else we got yeah gold span dragon's really good like again he, if you're making treasures i think it goes in there just because it's really good at making treasures you want a lot of mana you need a blasphemous act of course you are if you're in red you probably need a blasphemous act uh unless you've got access to white and i don't think you do uh tectonic giant's amazing actually because it has a lot of like options like so you can deal a whole bunch of damage to your opponents you can exile cards to cast them that's really good a lot always having options is good uh so i would definitely consider it because it's 50 cents uh you know drug necromance is pretty gu uh, good exiles your opponent's stuff when they die you can kill your opponent's stuff pretty easily uh, and hope to keep your, a lot of your stuff alive or you can sack your opponent's stuff to have them sack stuff things like that uh i do like this it does make mana so or treasures at least so i do like that it and it's for all of your creatures so that is pretty good uh you know in this deck um i don't know whether you want things that are like whatever it was not the vault whatever his name was that you whenever a thing dies of oh, marionette master like marionette master because you're sacking you might sack some of your uh treasures so it might be relevant the same with uh whatever his name is down here uh, if if load a disciple of the vault yeah maybe i don't know like i don't I, I wouldn't rely on it because it's not that good i don't think um i'm just reading this i don't even know what this did for a bit yeah it's not terribly bad i think that's pretty good darn good again it's stealing your opponent's stuff so I, i'm not high on that because like well, is it going to do anything for what i'm doing like yeah that's where i'm at with those um grenzo grenzo is pretty darn good he is a bit of money so you know that yeah can get a bit dicey sometimes i like this uh uh dude here he pretty darn cool uh, i like making treasures and he makes some treasures um uh, actually that's pretty darn good conspiracy theorist it does have to attack uh so you want to try to protect it you there's a few creatures in here that want to attack essentially to do their thing and you need to protect them uh so just a few things that would help protect them is good um uh, what does flame skull do top card ah uh, that's not terrible but yeah sure um for four bucks not too bad uh <coughs> so we're just going to look through some more of this stuff Brazer Apprentice actually wouldn't be too bad for this deck. Cheap card, pretty decent. Uh, you need to find ways to get out of more artifacts to sack that you that you're happy sacking. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, this thing's stealing more of your opponent's stuff. That's fine. This thing steals your opponent's stuff too, though, as well, and it is in the deck, so. Like this is pretty cool. This this guy, if your opponents attack your op oh, any of your opponents, it's like oh we get to draw cards and, and lose life. Cool, you know. Uh, I was thinking that um, that guy Asmodeus from the um, 
from the set actually it says if you draw a card you exile it instead and then you can put the cards from exile into your hand so this commander works really well with that card um that you know it, it, it basically means that you can get those cards to your hand and play them and whatnot rather than having other things that could cast them um Yeah, same thing, stealing people's stuff, don't really care. Oh, that's actually in the deck. Turn the skirt you can cast, but still. Uh, there's some interesting, interesting cards. Like Oblivion Sower, like that's interesting. Like some of these cards, like I love decks like this that are just like off the wall and they're completely different from what you've seen normally would see it's great that they build in some of these synergies um you know and whatnot uh actually i love encore especially with this little guy he's so good um yeah actually i'm gonna look up just asmodeus really quickly because uh, i think yeah that i want to know its price for you guys if you guys want to pick it up uh, from the set again prices are going to be in flux, but still um, I still would think that it's worth knowing it um, so Let's look at set let's Look at the adventures So I haven't looked at many of the prices for the set at all like I don't look at the prices too much and I, again I know it's going to be in flux so again uh, do take it with a grain of salt to a degree. Uh, well, not is he a commander? Yeah, he's a commander because he's mono black legend. Uh, and you can see some of the best commanders from this set. You know, that's kind of cool. Uh, being played and being built. Here he is. Ten bucks for Asmodeus. That's pretty good. He's really good. Um, you know, card in this deck. Uh, specifically so I would think about it um, anyway we'll get back to get back to this over here not going back to the deck yet um, what is this thing uh, you can counter your own thing to exile something else seems interesting it seems cool if you're like Oh, I have this random mana rock, and I'm just like already on turn eight, turn nine, turn ten, whatever, and I don't need it because I've got 30, 40 something mana or whatever, um, and just like oh, I'll counter it and like see what I hit, you know, like that can be cool. And then you get to exile it and 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 get extra value off of playing it with your commander and whatnot. Seems pretty good. Uh, but again, it's niche. You mostly want to counter your uh, opponent's stuff. You don't want to give them something, but you're giving them something as a, you know, you know, whatever. Uh, actually, uh, bounce pretty good. Yeah. Uh, actually, any of these four tell cards are pretty good because you want to exile stuff again even though I sort of said that other creature uh, whatnot could foretell all your cards but still you might want some of these foretell cards that are in your in your colors uh, and whatnot because they do work with what you're trying to do um, I like making treasures Making treasures is good, uh, but still, uh, it's hard to find stuff sometimes. Some for some of these things because there's just not enough quite for it. It's kind of interesting. Throws of chaos because cascade casts things from exile essentially. Uh, so anything that has Cascade might want to put in this deck. There are a few creatures that do Cascade and whatnot, so there might be okay. 
Uh, Apex of Power does exhaust, so that's probably pretty cool too. But still, it's not the most powerful, but still it does give you mana sometimes. So, you know. Uh, Gabanic Rally isn't too bad, but you more want to be like a Storm style deck. Uh, you want to cast multiple things a lot, so I don't know whether you can do that. Uh, do you like? Do you care that you're letting your opponent like get a something for free if you're getting two things for free and getting two treasures? I don't know. That might be okay. Um, Mizzix's mastery isn't too bad either. Getting all the instant sorceries from your graveyard back and whatnot. But again, you want to be more focused on instant sorceries. I don't know. Um, I don't think there's quite enough. Uh, there's a couple cards actually. The new uh, or relatively new uh, mono black um, creature that makes a pest whenever you cast an instant sorcery is absurdly good. Um, so yeah, that's that's really good. Of course, we all know the the um, young pyromets is pretty good. Um, so yeah, cascade dealing damage, whatever, but still. Cascade. Cascade is pretty good in this deck. Uh, what else do we got? Do, do, do. It's funny that not a lot of the red cards do it. A lot of the um, of black cards rather do it. You know, a lot of the red cards do. Um, Our Promise, not too bad. Finale of Eruptions, not too bad. Um... So, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, choose target creature. Exile drop card. You may have deal damage that creature equal to the card's mana cost. If you don't, you may play that card this until end of turn. That's pretty good. Not too bad. I haven't read all these cards. Uh, of course you want, like, Wayfarer's Bob in this deck and a few other cards. I don't think you're focused on making treasures, but making treasures is good. Treasure map's pretty good. Bowls of Citadel are obviously good. Uh, Inspiring Satchery. You definitely want an Inspiring Satchery if you can get your hands on one. Uh, this means that you can tap your artifacts or your treasures for real spells and, you know, start playing your stuff. Um, actually, knowledge pool. Man, no, it, it leads to too many like weird things and combos and things like that. I think so. Uh, maybe not. Um, same with possibility storm. Underworld breach is actually kind of interesting because it it has that ability to exile your stuff and then you can recast them and things like that or get them back to your hand with other effects. So that might not be too bad, um, but it is a more CDH style card or whatnot. You really want to be able to go off with it, quote unquote. It's not that great when you're just like, oh, I'll get back one thing and then I'll exile three things, and then oh, I'm not going to do anything with them. Actually, Necropotence is insane with this, insane with this because it exiles them. So yeah, that's just insane. It, oh no, you actually can't cast them though from the exile unless you've got other ways to, yeah, sort of do it. It's a bit weird sometimes. You've got to be able to cast them from that zone. Jace Blasting Cannon is actually pretty darn good. Um, you know, so that that one, especially since it turns into a land uh, that you can use for mana, it doesn't matter so much the ability on the land. It's just, yeah, it exists, so, yeah. Some of the Chandras, a lot of the Chandras actually, you know, do this uh, exiling the top and you can play it or whatnot ability. Um, there's not too many utility lands uh, that I would think that you want. Not really. Treasure Vault's actually pretty darn good, but 
Uh, not many others that I would think. Uh, there are some man artifacts. That you want. A lot of the good ones are actually already in this. So if you want a few other cards like Rakdos Signet, I think that might actually be in there, but whatever. Uh, you know, there's obviously some really good ones uh, that you can put in. Uh, but otherwise, I don't think there's anything that actually exalts anything. So there's things that make you discard. So... Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, I'm not not interested. Uh, of course, lands, I'm not going to go through too much. But if you've got the good stuff, if you can find some stuff that comes in untapped or relatively comes in untapped, yeah, grab it, put it in there. Uh, you'll be happy. You'll play some decent games of Magic the Gathering uh, with your friends and whatnot. So... Yeah, what would I consider when you're looking at this deck? Getting back to it over here. Um, um, so yeah, there's a few cards that we'll get down here and quickly look at that we would think about taking out. Most of the tap lands, of course. I'm not going to go through too much of it. Siren Void? What the heck is this doing in here? It just scries when it enters. Like, what the heck? Like, I don't get that, that it does anything. Like, it does nothing. It do, it scries when it enters. It's... What? What? It un, it's stay untapped, sure, but still, one scry? Who cares? Like, whatever. I don't get that. It's like a really bad. Like, sure, this can get rid of like, uh, like enchantments or whatever that black and red have hard times dealing with. But still, like, I don't know whether you really need it because it's so random to be like, oh, I have to roll this d10 to actually see what how far deep it goes. But maybe you don't care. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like that good. You just like have to kill them. You don't need enchantment removal if you have player removal people. Come on. Okay, all right. Um, so, yeah, like, some of these cards are actually really good. They've put some decent lands in, in these. I don't know why, but, again, they put some in there. Uh, Shadow Ridge and yeah, Signet Lands aren't very good. Rectus Cadenarium, not very good. I would take it out. Like, the rest of it, Mortuary Mire, take it out. But like most of it else, um, I would think it's fine for the most part. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's still, it's still here. So, yeah, I'll be here for the rest of, of those lands. But, yeah, actually, Theater of Horrors is actually in there. Like, Shiny Impetus, it's fine. It makes treasures. Uh, but, yeah, I don't really care about that. I don't really think it's worth it. Uh, what does Dead's Man's Chest actually do? Anything that's in here that sort of, um, you know, it, it, dice rolls or ventures into dungeons I don't think is worth it. Warlock class is actually pretty sweet uh, in uh, card. Unstable Obelisk I don't think, you know, is worth the time to worry about trying to get rid of a permanent. The same thing, like I said. If you really need to get rid of an enchantment or something you can't deal with, player removal is often just, like, better. Like, honestly. Um, like, you get to the city's blessings sometimes, but otherwise it's just a bad, like, command sphere, and command sphere is not that great, like, or bad mindstone, or, you know, like, I don't know, like, there's some other great, better, like, four mana, like, things that you could do, like, Hedron Archive. I think that's a bit better, even though that that's not amazingly great. At least it's two cards. Uh, Chaos Bomb, what the heck? Uh, oh, it exiles cards. But you're going to just hit random in, uh, spells. Like, yeah, sure, you get that sweet extra value. But, like, unless somebody's really playing, like, a spell-heavy deck, you're just going to get random stuff a lot of the time. You get counter spells here and there and whatnot that just don't do anything. Um, 
What does Fiend Lash do? Whenever it is dealt damage, deal that much damage. Yeah, that's okay, but nah, I would rather take take that out. Um. Yeah, Ruckfield's play, no. <laughs> Bag of Devouring is actually kind of a cool card. Um, you, you put all the stuff under it. I like Bag of Holding too, but this is uh, whenever something dies, essentially, or whenever it's sacrificed. But again, you're not really in a sacrificing style deck that much, so I'm not like, where's this going? It's just fine to be like, oh, well, if uh, something bad happens, I'll sack all my stuff and I'll put it underneath the bag and then I'll get it all back. That's a cool idea, but it's just, like, not the main thing that you're doing, so I don't think it'll happen that much. Um, so, uh, yeah, get rid of this. I don't really think you need it. Like, sure, it's kind of like Blasphemous Act, but... And you get treasures back. I don't know. The thing is, like, the difference between Blasphemous Act and this is, like, you actually have to have the mana up front to pay for it, and you only get a random amount of, like, treasures from it. So, I don't know. It's it's okay, but it's, it's not nearly as good as Blasphemous Act. Um, I don't think that this is pr that good. You don't need it, especially since it's sorcery speed. Them losing life isn't probably worth it. Making people, or d destroying six things, you've got to have the six things. And if they don't, if somebody doesn't have the six thing, you're just like, oh, okay, I can't do anything with this. So I don't think it's that good. It's okay, but it's not great. Um... Yeah, I don't like the roll, dice rolling thing on this, but this is pretty decent uh, on the base, so that's a little bit more uh, high on it. Uh, Cascade's really good. Like I said, throws a chaos, ignite the future. Hell through hell, you could do a bit better, but it's okay. Disrupt a quorum, I don't care. I don't think you care about goading people, but. Then again, I could be wrong, because if somebody's trying to kill you with a whole bunch of creatures, you want to dissuade them, so it could be okay. Um, what does Consuming Vapors do? Uh, yeah, that's that's irrelevant, pretty much. You really want stuff that makes each opponent sack, so I don't really think that's there. Uh... uh Yeah, that's fine. You know, that's just fine. Um, Devils, okay. Uh, it's fine. Some prisoners. Terminate, it's okay. Not amazing, but fine. Rakdos Charm can be useful. Uh, Blah is pretty good. Bandle Blast is pretty good. Uh, deals combat damage. Yeah, that's pretty good. Exhort is really good. And exhort on your all of your creatures is really good. You just drain people out. But it isn't really whatever else you're doing. But it gives you something to do with if you have a lot of mana or whatnot. Marionette Master, again, I don't know whether you're on that plan of like, I'm going to sack all my stuff and then I'm just going to burn people out with a whole bunch of this sort of stuff. If you want to go down that plan, you go down that plan. Uh, Ogre Slumlord, like, I don't get this, I don't, really don't, like, if you're on a sacrifice plan of some sort, yeah, but this in this deck, nah, nah. Um, yeah, that's okay, it's not amazing, but it's still, like, draws your cards and might persuade people. Uh, yeah, that's fine, it's not amazing, but still fine. Uh, what does this do? Da -da 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 -da. Dies, yeah, it's okay, but again, you can find better things. Uh, it gives you nice blockers, but that's yeah. Uh, wild magic, what does this thing do? Uh, 
Oh, actually, that's pretty darn good. You know, giving more of your stuff cascade. Tech Giant's really good. Pretty good. Gonti's okay, but you, you can find other things that, you know, do... I don't know, like... I don't care. Like, again, like I say, I don't care if you're stealing other people's stuff. Because, again, you're just not going to work with what you're doing. Chittering Witch, again, what is this doing here? Like, what's this doing here? It's, this is not a sacrifice deck. Like, this is... It gives you fodder to sack things. So what? Like, it doesn't do anything with what you're doing. You're trying to exile stuff or whatnot. Like, yeah. This does exile stuff, but again, I don't really like the randomness of just, like, uh, you know, figuring out, like, all this roll dice stuff. I don't care about that. Like, if you want to keep it in, you keep it in. But again, like, just, I don't want this random sort of stuff that doesn't do much. This isn't too bad. Helps you cast things or put things in exile and whatnot. Not too bad. Piper of the Swarm? Again, this is not a sack deck. You know, like, what? what's this doing here? Loyal Apprentice? No, don't see the point in that. That's fine. Dark World Oracle? It actually exiles stuff, doesn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess this is why you've got some of that stuff. But again, you can find random cheap stuff to, to, to put in here to sack, I guess. Like, some of that stuff's fine, but you, you, you can still sacrifice stuff. And you can put stuff in your graveyard and recur stuff more easily. Just more recursive stuff would be fine. Better than a lot of this other stuff that just makes random, like, dudes and whatnot, I think, for the most part. And just more synergistic sort of stuff. But that's pretty much it for this deck as well. So, you know, we've whizzed through these four decks now. Um, you know, tell me what you guys think. Again, let me know what you would do with this deck. Let me know what kind of route you would take. I'll write it all down there in the comments below. I'm sure I'll be back sometime soon-ish, at least, uh, with more stuff like this. Let me know what you want to see as well. So, yeah, let me know all the things. Write it down there in the comments below. Until next time, we'll see ya. If you would like to further support the channel, you can go onto our Patreon. You can also get social with us on our Facebook. To follow all the updates make sure you hit the like button and on our Discord. To get into it please leave a comment and I'll send you an invite. All links are in the description. I hope you have enjoyed this video here today and if you have please consider liking, sharing and subscribing and I hope you will come back for another one. See you then.